Hello everybody, welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Before we get started, make sure you're smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Every like and subscription helps build the channel. You know what helps even more? Spread the word to your friends about the best wine show anywhere. This episode is the second episode of a nine part series on Uruguayan wine reviews. These are all free samples, so I have total autonomy in these reviews. Be sure to watch the first episode of this series for a more in-depth feature on Uruguayan wine. The short version is that wine has certainly been made in Uruguay since the early 1600s. However, it was not until 1870 that the modern wine industry really begins in Uruguay. Okay, let's get some background for today's wine. Founder Carlos Domingo Traversa arrives with his parents from Italy in 1904. As a boy, he worked in the vineyards where he lived. In 1937, he and his wife, Maria Josefa Solort, purchased five hectares of land in Montevideo. Montevideo. Then in 1956, he starts his winery along with his children, Dante, Luis, and Armando. They are now into their fourth generation of winemakers, though the website doesn't mention any names from the third or fourth generations, at least not that I saw. They have over 300 hectares of vineyards. 220 hectares are in the Cuchilla, Pereia region of the northern part of Montevideo where the winery is, and then there's 80 in the Paso Cuello region in the far north part of Canelones. Sorry I couldn't get enough info to see where these vineyards are at. <laughs> they also, well at least the other area than uh, uh, Canelones. They also purchase fruit from over 100 smaller vineyards that need to meet the Traversa's high standards. Soils for both vineyards are made up of clay, limestone, sedimentary, and quaternary calcareous rock with high concentrations of calcium carbonate. Quaternary refers to basically 2.6 million years ago until today. The difference between them is that the soil where the winery is located is more superficial and lighter. The 2022 Familia Traversa Sauvignon Blanc, suggested retail price $12, is from Montevideo. It's 100% Sauvignon Blanc. It's hand harvested. The yield from the vineyard is 12,000 to 18,000 kilograms per hectare, translates to 4.9 to 7.3 tons per acre. It goes through cold fermentation in both stainless uh, steel and wood, mostly stainless steel with a small portion in new American oak, new American oak barrels. ABV is 13.5%, the pH is 3.42, the TA is 6.2 grams per liter, and the RS is 2.9 grams per liter. All right, let's get into the wine. Now I mentioned with last week's wine about like lack of stats from stat sheets. Well, this one, you know, gave me some stats. If I remember correctly, most of the wines at least give me, you know, ABV and maybe a pH and a total and a total acidity. Um, some like this one give the RS, um, but there are some wines that, you know, were kind of light on the stats, but that's okay. I'm really interested in trying this. After doing, what, eight Sauvignon Blancs from Chile, I thought I was all Sauvignon Blancs out, but no, I have a little bit more to do from here. This is the only other, this, uh, yeah, this is the only other, yeah, the other one is not Sauvignon Blanc. I have one more white wine from Uruguay to do. And then we all reds with a surprise last one. All right. So I'm going to definitely compare this with the Chile and stuff just because I, I just did a ton of them today. So aromatically, it's kind of medium-ish in the aromatics. It doesn't really jump out at you. And I just get more of a general feeling of citrus stuff, but I don't really get any of the typical greenness that you get from Sauvignon Blanc. Though I did mention in the Chilean wines that sometimes that happened too. It wasn't like a lot of pepper coming out. Let's just taste it. It's very refreshing. Um, I get citrus for days on this. It's kind of the grouping, lemon, lime, touch of orange, not really any grapefruit, which is usually a major citrus component to Sauvignon Blanc, but not all of them have it. Or I won't, 
I won't detect grapefruit in uh, Sauvignon Blanc. And this is all around the world that grapefruit just doesn't come up for me with Sauvignon Blanc. I also feel like you get this touch of like green apple to it, but it's not quite green apple, but there's this tartness, really tartness of fruit to it. Really good acidity here. Um, a touch of floral, there's a touch of salinity. I mean, it's a pretty like basic wine. It's nothing crazy. It's definitely something that's in that, I just want something that tastes good. It's not terribly expensive. Uh, it's from another country. Um, and I'm trying to view this as a Uruguayan wine, not as a comparison with New Zealand or Chile or Sauvignon Blanc from France. Or, I mean, I'm, I'm viewing it as, this is wine from, from Uruguay. And it's just very tasty. Do I think this is probably the best example of Sauvignon Blanc from the country? Probably not. Um, is it tasty? Is it really good? Yeah. Is probably one of only a few that really get at least into, well, first of all, these are all free samples. And I don't know exactly the states that all these are, are uh, available in. So I have no idea if they're available for me in Texas or where, where else in the states. But I would say that you probably aren't going to see a ton of Sauvignon Blanc from Uruguay, depending on what part of the country you're in. You probably won't see a lot of Uruguay wines to begin with. So would I call this a classic example from Uruguay? Probably not, but maybe it is. I, this is the first time I've ever had one. Hell, this is only the third wine I've, fourth wine I've ever had from Uruguay that I can remember. So yeah, it tastes good. With all that said, it tastes good. It's pleasant wine. It's definitely a, a thing to start off your meal with or just to drink, just to have something to drink. There is a touch of grapefruit coming through, but other than that, I don't really get any of the really overriding things that I expect from Sauvignon Blanc. If I was blind to this, I wouldn't know exactly where to take it as far as grape-wise. I mean, forget where in the world, just identifying the grape. I don't, there's nothing in it that I'm, I'm just like, it screams Sauvignon Blanc. It would be in my grouping of grapes that it could be. Oh, I just got the pepper. Like, as I was breathing out the retro nasal, I just got like a little jalapeno. So with that said, if I was <laughs> tasting this blind, I just said all that and I, I breathed out. Yeah, it just took a while. It must have needed to like really, and this wine is basically room temperature, but it must have just needed to interact with, with the saliva and the, and the acidity and the pH in my mouth to all of a sudden do that. Then I would be like, ah, this is Sauvignon Blanc. Like it, it just came to me like really at the very end. It's fleeting. It's there. I'm glad I got it. I will be very happy to drink this wine at some other point in time. It'll be very pleasant, something to drink, kind of watch some TV with it, have it with, um, have it with some type of lunch. Wow. Yeah. It, it takes a while for that, for that jalapeno bell, more jalapeno than bell pepper to really come through at the very end. Kind of cool. All right. That's going to do it for today's episode. If you enjoy what I'm doing here, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe and then tell your friends. We'll see you next time.